Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create elements that combine pieces of text and icons using the Icon with Text widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are currently on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. We can also see the different layout options, whether it's an icon above the text or an icon next to the text. In terms of the icons themselves, there is an extensive library made up of several icon packs, so you'll be spoiled for choice. Additionally, you can customize this widget using its numerous typography options, text effects, color variations, and more. Getting it to match your site design will be a breeze. The icon with text can be combined with other elements such as images, or anything else you like. Essentially, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. So let's take a look at how you can use this widget and customize it. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for icon with text. There it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is how the icon with text looks by default. The first thing you can change is its layout. Essentially, using these options, we can pick the icon position in relation to the text. The default setting is before content, but we can change that with before title and get this look. Or set top, which will place the icon on top of the text. I'll use this layout. The next option lets us add a link that will apply to the icon so it will be clickable and take your visitors to whichever URL you set. Just type in the one you want here. I don't need this for my demo, but if you choose to set a link, this is where you can pick between it opening in the same window or a new one. After that, you can pick the icon type. If you just click here, it opens the icon library and you can scroll through the selection or search for the icon you want. I'll use this one. Insert. If you don't find the icon you want in the library, you can always upload an SVG of your own. OK. Following that, we have the Enable Separator option. If we switch it to Yes, you get a separator between the icon and the text. I won't be using it in my demo, so I'll put this back to default, which is no separator. The next section, Content, contains the options we need to replace the default placeholder text. So, the first option is for replacing the title. I'll change mine, just a sec. And the second option is for replacing the text. I'm going to do that now because I don't want to have any pseudo Latin in my element, even though I'm just making it as a demo for this tutorial. Ok, here's my new text. Now I can stylize it if I want to. There are all kinds of settings here that would allow me to change the look of my text without affecting the title. And there's the text mode for anyone who wants to add code to the text or use CSS to style it. Other than that, we have one more option in this section. It's the content alignment, set to center by default, but we can move it to the left or the right. I'll leave mine in the center. Then we have the button settings. The first thing here is the button layout option. It's set to filled by default, but you have alternatives such as outline, that looks like this, and textual, that looks like this. For my part, I'll stick with the filled layout. Then we have the button type selection. The one we have by default is standard, but you can change that to the type with inner border that looks like this. Or icon boxed, which looks a lot like the standard type until you pick an icon for it. I'll put this back. Then we can enable a button text underline. It looks nice, but I don't want to use it this time. Ok, next we have the size option where we can change the button from normal to small. To large to normal full width. I'll set mine back to normal. And underneath this we can change the button text. This is where we'd add the button link, and this is where we'd pick how that link would open, in the same window or a new one. If you want to add a button icon to this button type, you can. Just open the button icon settings and click here to upload an SVG or open the icon library. Once you've picked your icon, use the icon position option to set whether the icon will be on the left or the right of the button text. Speaking of the button text, there's something I want to show you. If you erase the button text, the whole button will be removed. By removing its content, you can make the button disappear. And actually, I'm going to carry on without the button so we can focus on the icon and text parts of the icon with text widget. Now, in here we have a couple of settings for the separator. 
One is layout, where we can pick if the separator will be standard, like the line we saw, or if it will be made up of an image, thanks to the border image option, or if it will be with icon, which puts an icon in the middle of a standard line. And the other option is for the separator position, which can be center, left, or right. Then, sticking with the separator theme, if you're using one and you pick the border image layout, you'll get some options for that specific layout here, such as which image you want to upload. And the same goes for the separator icon. If you're using the separator layout called with icon, this is where you'd pick your icon. And there's nothing here because I didn't enable the separator. Now, I won't be going into any more detail about this as we'll be covering it separately. Okay, in the Appear Animation section, we can pick the kind of animation our icon with text will have. It's set to None by default, but you can change that to From Bottom, From Top, From Left, From Right, and Fade In. I'll set it to Appear from the bottom so I can show you the Appear Delay option. You can set it to show with a random amount of time, which means you'll get the delay of anything from 10 to 400 milliseconds. Or you can set the milliseconds yourself. Just type in the value you want to use for the appearance of your icon with text. If I set 500, we get this delay. Okay, I'll put this back to none. Now, the last set of options in the Content tab are Developer Tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, this text, that we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, I'll put this back and we can move on to the Style tab and see what we have in there. The first section is for the text and title style. With the options here, we can pick the title tag. It can be anything from H1 to H6 or the P tag. I'll use H5 for my title. Okay, using the title color option, we can set the color of our title. I'll set mine by typing in the hex code for black. There it is. Then we have the title hover option. It's set the same way as the title color, but it only appears when someone hovers over the element and it only affects the title. Below that, we have the title typography settings. These let us pick things like the font family for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then the size option lets us adjust the font size. I'll set 21 pixels. Then we can change our title weight. You can make it bold or use one of these number values to fine-tune its weight. OK. With the text transform, we can make our title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or normal, which is the same as our default. And under style, we can make our title normal, which is the same as default, or turn it italic or oblique. I'll put mine back to default. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, which is our default setting. Then the line height option. If I move this, it creates more space around the title. The default value is in M's, but you can change that to pixels. Finally, we have the letter spacing option that can give us more space between the letters. Alright, that's it for the typography options. After them, we have the text color option. We can use it to change the color of the text. And below it, we have the text typography options, which are the same as the title typography options we just saw, only these would apply to the text instead of the title. Then the next set of options is for spacing style. The first option, Title Margin Top, can add more space above the title. This here. I'll adjust mine manually by typing in 22 pixels. Then we have something similar for the text top. So we can add more space here by adjusting the Text Margin Top option. I'm good with the existing margin. And the Icon Margin settings, we can increase the values here to increase the space all around our icon. Alternatively, you can click here to delink the fields and reset the values. This will let you adjust each margin individually. Following this, we have the button margin top. It doesn't apply to me right now as I don't have a button, but if you do, this option will let you add more space above your button, essentially drawing it away from the text above. Okay, next we have the icon style settings. 
In here, we have the icon boxed option. If we set it to yes, it will create this box behind the icon. And to go along with that, we'll have the icon background color, where we can adjust the color of the box. There's also the size option for adjusting how small or large the icon box will be. There's also the icon border size, which you can set. Let me show you. And when you give it a border color, there. By picking an icon border color, you enable the border around the icon box. And using the size option, you can set the border thickness. Also, if you want to curve the edges of the icon box, whether it has a border or not, you can do so using the icon border radius option. Alright. I don't plan on using an icon background, so I'll switch this back to default. When we disable this, the options that apply to it disappear. The ones that remain are icon size, so you can change how large the icon will be. I'll set 60 pixels for mine. Below that, we have these switches for adjusting normal and on hover icon appearance. Under normal, we have the option to change the icon color. I'll set a hex code and make my icon light gray. Then on hover, we have the icon hover color. So this option would be visible when someone hovers over the icon with text element. And the color picker works the same as any of the others we've seen so far. The second option here is the icon hover. So it's like a tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over any part of the element. Move horizontal looks like this. Move vertical looks like this. And scale looks like this. I'll keep the move vertical animation, so it's just going to be a little something to have for my icon on hover. Okay, after this we have a few sections with options that will work for you depending on the settings you made in the sections before, particularly those in the content tab, for example button style settings. To use these you need to have a button. If you kept yours you can adjust its typography, colors, borders and so on using these options. Then the button icon style settings will let you style your button icon, if you're using one. Then the same goes for the button inner border style. This will work for you if you have the button type with inner border. And you'll have these options if you enable the button text underline. Then there are separator style options for anyone who opted to use a separator. And from those, anyone who chose the separator layout with icon will have the separator icon style settings. Okay, this is it in terms of the options I wanted to show you. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful options for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our icon with text widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Alright, another thing I wanted to show you, if you need multiple icon with text elements and you're happy with the one you made, you can simply duplicate it. To do that, right-click on it and go to Duplicate. I'll make a few more now so you can see how they would look together, but I'll skip ahead with the video because we've already covered the process. And here we are now. My icon with text elements are all done. Don't forget you can stylize these to have different looks within the group if you don't want to make them look similar as I did. It's up to you to see which of the possibilities offered by this plugin work best with the style and design of your site. Now if we look back at the widgets page, we can see the different examples of its use. Here for one is the style and look I used to make my icons with text for this video. The options we covered can help you make any of these examples shown on the page. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here or create something unique, it's entirely up to you. Hopefully this tutorial has helped you to see how easy making icon with text elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its icon with text widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!